Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, out there in the next weekend, and we would seem to like to welcome you to Mystery Movie Night with Legal Without Sin Screen Carnal. Our friend and colleague Sims Corner is still away visiting family, so I'm flying solo tonight. We already have some people in the chat. I would like to say hello to my partner in crime, the toxic gunslinger himself, my co-host on Action Theater, Western Cinema Presents, and for the Fallout watch alongs. Ladies and gentlemen, Chad I Bear. Faithful Blue Wrench. The Bird Woman of YouTube. One of my guests for last night's episode of The Other Side of Midnight. Connie Cleary. Friend of the channel. New channel member. And hopefully soon to be guest on the channel, Curtis Selby. Also joining us, another channel member, a guy who's been wa watching my channel from the beginning, JPRPH1. All right, on with the show. Hope that everyone had a good day. I want to thank everyone who is following along on Twitter. I can't see you, but I know that you're there. Please hit the like, subscribe if you have not yet, hit the bell icon for notifications, and share out the stream. Now, to say that I was not expecting the movie I saw this evening would be an understatement and a half. Um, now, the film, um, if it was in fact meant to be a film, and um, this is when I am going to need some help from a certain segment of the YouTube community. Tonight's movie was Spy Family Code White. Um, now, I am familiar somewhat with the uh, spy family franchise i do know that it started out as a manga i also know uh that it is a very popular anime series and the movie is something of uh what i would consider to be like a side quest, you know the the main um, the main storyline, um, which is the whole um, Operation Strix situation, uh, does get mentioned um, as long as well as the uh, chief villain of the piece, Desmond. Uh, however, after the first few minutes of, of this movie, they uh, uh, kind of forget all that. And it becomes kind of like this side quest movie. Uh, you have, of course, uh, this family of spies you have you have Lloyd who is uh, kind of your Ethan Hunt of the movie 
you have uh, the wife, um, well, the, the agent posing as his wife, Yor, who's the assassin. Uh, you have their adopted daughter, Anya, who is uh, a telepath. And you have their dog, Bond, who is uh, not only aptly named, but he's got a few tricks up his sleeve, too. Now, uh, just to uh, sort of blow myself up here a moment. Um, pardon me as I had to uh, switch rooms for the evening. Um, I do have a few of these um, uh, spy family uh, mangas. That's Anya right there. Um, uh, this is a character who's called uh, Nightfall. And uh, that's, uh, I think, the uh, son of the villain. Um, yes, I have two number sevens. So who knows? Maybe one of these days somebody might get one of these. And um, and uh, this character is also a side character um, who's kind of like their um, go-to guys they ever need any help with something but uh yeah so uh the daughter gets into a a cooking contest at school and decides that she is going to make this favorite dish um of the principal because the principal is going to be the judge in this cooking contest this movie is basically ratatouille for the first half um so lloyd decides okay let's let's make a trip let's make a family trip out of this as we go you know to the hometown of the principal um, where they meet, again, this kind of famous chef. I told you, this movie's kind of ratatouille for the first half. Um, um, they have the whole situation of the wife thinking Lloyd is going to replace her. You have Nightfall wanting to replace her. You have everything going on with the kid. And um, you have Lloyd, who wants to focus on this Operation Strix, which is the main storyline of the series. And um, he's, he's taken off of that because this other bad guy shows up during the course of this, you know, family weekend. So it, it's kind of Mr. and Mrs. Smith meets Ratatouille, <laughs> you know, um, for the first half with the, with this kind of whack job kid, you know, who's kind of kind of annoying to be honest um, for much of it. And there's this whole storyline with her that I'll get to when um, when we get to it. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of this movie um now one of the issues that i always have with the anime are the tonal shifts you know and i i tend to like i i tend to like the ones that stick the tone um like Akira, Ghost in the Shell, Armitage 3, um, Cowboy Bebop, Samurai 7, you know, um, Helsing Ultimate, you know, um, the ones that tend to stick to, to a tone, um, I, I tend to um, gravitate towards, you know, and I'm not 
uh, really an authority on anime. So I'm grading this movie on something of a curve. Um, but not only are there tonal shifts, there are changes in the... in the style of the anime and hello to sin's corner there there are changes to the uh to the style of the anime and that's something that i usually have issue getting my head around it was to me kind of distracting uh, in places, you know, I got what they were going for, um, but it was a little distracting. Uh, it it was an English dub. It was the English dub. Um, I would prefer maybe seeing this subtitled, but that's fine. I, I completely understand. Um, so. And uh, hello to the viewer, Drew. This is excellent news. This channel has hit 913 subscribers. Congratulations. Let's get Drew to 1,000. All right. Yes, congratulations. Um, I guess, yeah, I think, I think kids would have preferred seeing this movie um, more than adults. Uh, you could... You could tell um, the people who are the anime fans or those who are willing to give this a chance um, other than, you know, because there are some people who definitely skedaddled the hell out of there real quick, you know. And when this movie started, which is when the, um, uh, the Crunchyroll the Crunchy logo came up, and that's the first image you see. And I'm like, I thought I was in the wrong theater, to be uh, to be honest. Um, so I had to go back and check. Real quick. Are, are they are they showing this in a separate theater? No, I'm in the right theater. <laughs> so um, so yeah, that was uh, that was a bit of a surprise. Then you, then you got the Sony logo, and then you got the Toho. And uh, Toho Animation logo. And uh, so, okay, we are watching an anime. And since I was, um, I knew enough about Spy Family to, knew, to know who the characters were, I realized very quick, okay, this is a Spy Family movie. And it's just going to be a matter of how long it is. Um, it, it runs, I would say, somewhere around the 148 to 150 mark. So it is a little long, and uh, you do feel it, especially in that in that first half. Um, however, the good news uh, with it is is that when you get farther along in the film, there's a long setup. But when you get farther along in the film, when the the fit hits the shan, you it really does start to pick up and i'm really glad they have this poster art because there are scenes in this that are very reminiscent of something that you would see out of a mission impossible movie and uh it owes a lot to the incredibles as well um So on that basis, yeah, I'm going to recommend this. Um, you know, the bad guy is a threat. You know, there are fisticuffs. You know, there are some action sequences that really work. Um, there's a evil sidekick that's a pretty unstoppable kind of guy um for reasons i don't want to give away 
Um, now, early on in the film, we there there's this basically this mic. It's the old let's keep the microfilm away from the bad guy type situation that takes place. The the microfilm is hidden in a piece of chocolate. Stay with me on this. <laughs> uh, the little girl eats it. Um, not on purpose, but she eats it. And so they're getting chased around because she has swallowed the microfilm. <laughs> I told you, this is a little silly. Um, and so it, it basically becomes this whole th thing of you have this whole Mr. and Mrs. Smith situation going on. You have this other agent who wants to take the place of the wife. You have, you know, you have their their boss, who's kind of very reminiscent of Sir Integra from um, uh, Helsing. So, uh, yeah, there, there are these little, little beats that you can kind of hang on to. There is a joke that gets, shall we say, Scatological. Um, this is a PG-13 movie. It earns the PG-13. Um, it's a joke that goes on for far too long. And gets a little gross. And the punchline to that joke, the, the two punchlines to that joke left me saying, what the F? <laughs> you know, but again, it's an anime. There are these tonal shifts. I get it. Um, it's what doesn't entirely work for me in anime, but it's fine. Uh, whatever, you know. I, I, I'll be... You know, if if I don't want to say if I wasn't reviewing it, that's when I would have got up and left. But I did kind of check out of this movie for five minutes. But then it comes back and becomes this Mission Impossible meets The Incredibles kind of movie again. Um, and when the movie is um, running on that track, that's when I dug it the most. Um, because these, these characters kind of are in a superhero vein, um, super, superhero rules apply, uh, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible movie rules apply here. Um, and if you look at it on that basis and you're not like an anime fan and, and you approach it with that in mind, I think you'll dig this movie. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of grading on a curb because I don't know if this is an outlier. I don't know where this falls in, in the, uh, you know, in the main storyline, if it's meant to, because this does play like it's a side quest, um, because you don't have, you don't have the main villain. You don't have Desmond in here. Um, as I said, he's mentioned, but you don't see him except very briefly in the first few minutes of the film, and then he's out in a movie. Uh, and hello to the host of Films with Friends, where I will be appearing on the 26th, and, uh, the creator of the 10 word review big Al presents uh his uh 
The League of Ungentlemanly Warfare uh, uh, review is up right now. I'm going to watch it right after my review is done. So if you've not yet seen it, please do so. All right. Um, right now I'm going to wrap it up with a spy family code white. And what code white means, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think anybody says code white during the course of the movie, but okay. Sounds cool. Um, so I am mildly recommending this because I think uh, once I maybe see a few episodes of the series, see if there are any other film versions of this, uh, maybe read up on the manga, and I showed off that I have a few uh, issues. Um, maybe I will appreciate this movie a little bit more. Um, but not really being steeped in anime, I am not the target audience for this. So I am uh, I'm I'm giving this movie kind of a mulligan. Um don't get don't get me wrong. Um the the pros far outweigh the cons in this movie. I just wish the second half was a little bit faster and that some of the jokes in the second half landed better. Um, uh, I'd all I'd also like to see the um, original um, Japanese language version of this, but if this is the only way we're going to get it here in America for right now, at least um, I'll take it. Um, so this is a. This is a thumbs up for me. I think anime fans especially will enjoy this. So, uh, and, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of uh, Spy Family at some point down the road. Um, all right. Um, Let's see. There was a uh, consensus. This is a film I would have been interested to see. I've been wanting to see the series Saw Civil War tonight. All right. So, uh, folks, uh, Big Al has a, a Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare review coming up. So, does Sin and Sin also, I'm assuming, is going to uh, have some words to say about Civil War. And I'll be curious to see because that movie has been getting some mixed reviews, to say the least. And uh, I'm hoping to see it sometime this week as well and put my own two cents in. But uh, uh, in any case, uh, uh, Lady Miss said she has seen this. And it's really good. Okay, cool. All right, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Sin says, uh, yeah, going to film my review for that tonight or tomorrow. All right, cool. Uh, says, enjoyed it. The film doesn't really take sides at all. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. All right. I uh, would like to remind everyone that uh, I am going to be uh, co-hosting live from Sparkwood 21, which is a retrospective of the Twin Peaks television series. Troy Pacelli, Netters Network. And uh, Aged Boomer will be joining me. Uh, Wednesday, I am going to be joining Jedi Bill for a watch along and discussion. And uh, 
likely a review as well of uh, episode two of Fallout. Thursday afternoon, Action Theater. We will be watching Equalizer. That will be at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard. And, of course, join me for the weekend update at 11.30 and find out what else I'm going to be doing during the week. All right. I don't want to ignore the chat. Sin says, I bought a mic and camera specifically to use here for reviews at my brother's house. Nice. Yes, indeed. Saw Civil War with him tonight. Otherwise, I would have gone to see the mystery movie. Yeah. Think I'll see this this weekend. Okay. And, of course, uh, thank you, Lady Mist, for dropping the links. That is Sin's link. And uh, that's mine. All right. So, uh, Spy Family. Uh, I had uh, issues with a couple of the with some of the tonal shifts, but that's completely my issue. Um, a little slow in the first half, in my opinion. But it does come around, and uh, the second half is basically The Incredibles meets Mission Impossible, <laughs> you know, and uh, the action uh, really works. All right. Well, that's going to be the show for this evening. I want to thank Sins Corner for joining us in the chat. Lady Mist for dropping the links. Connie Cleary, Curtis Selby, JPRPH1, Big Al Presents, Jedi Bill, The View with Drew, and everyone who is following along on Twitter and everyone who watches the replay. Please do not forget to hit the like share out the stream and subscribe to mine and sin's channel if you have not yet done so and of course subscribe to everyone in the chat from hq in all points north south east and west and hello to ldg Good night, take care, stay strong, because this is how we win.